Hey everybody, uh, it's me, Josh McCuga. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you watched um, Collider Movie Talk this morning, you know that I saw the movie It last night. Uh, didn't do well. It, uh, it, was a, it was a rough scene. Uh, last night didn't sleep too well. I don't think I'm going to sleep too well for months, but uh, I'm really happy to be here live at 9 a.m. on a central Wednesday for Collider TV Talk. We don't have to talk anything about It! We, thanks, guys. Thanks. Um, we're not going to talk American Horror Story. I wasn't going to double up uh, last night. Uh, we will. Or we're going to have Perry Nemiroff on tomorrow. She's going to break down a little American Horror Story because, you know, former host of Nightmares and uh, uh, just an all-around scary person. Scary Perry Nemiroff will be here to talk American Horror Story. Two non-scary people are here today. As always, the mother of Ginger Dragons. That'd be Grace Hancock. Oh, hello. Good morning on a sensual Wednesday. Please tweet me your quitter. Quitter. Quitter <laughs> questions. Yep, we're quitting. That's it. <laughs> and I'll see myself out. Please text me, tweet me your Twitter questions. 9 a.m. has been brutal on this crew. It's day two and we are falling apart. <laughs> I'm all like, okay, don't text me. Um, please tweet me your Twitter questions at Mrs. Grace. <laughs> Hashtag the letter TV talk. <laughs> Over to Emma hey, Yes, Mars. thank you, thank you. Yeah, if you need Grace's phone number, uh, just tweet at me. Spoiler uh, alert, I will post it at the end of the show. It starts did. with 1 800, so no worries. Yeah, it does. Oh, oh, yeah. 1 800 867 5309. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Uh, yep, great to be here. It's, yeah. you know, this is my first time doing the 9 a.m. TV. It's so funny because we did the 8 a.m. thing when we rough. did our, our trial run. Yeah. But yeah, I, can't imagine. I got so happy with that 11 o'clock time. But here we are, 9 a.m., ready yeah. to rock and roll. For the foreseeable future. We're not sure how long this 9 a.m. is going to last. Uh, we're just trying some new time slots here. On the, We're like basically that Friday show that they keep pushing around. It's like once upon a time. They're like, let's try 9. Let's <laughs> yeah. try 10.30. Yeah. Uh, but we're here. We're having fun. Uh, we got all kinds of fun stories to, to get to. Uh, Grace, what's first? All right, so Hulu is developing another uh, limited series about the Kennedys, this time with Chris Pine set to portray Bobby Kennedy. You know, Hulu did 11 63 This one is also going to be based on a book. I mean, we were we liked 11 63 sure. I really liked it at the top, and then it petered out a little bit for me. We all have our, <laughs> like, James Franco qualms. Um, but we love Chris Pine. He's super talented. And Bobby Kennedy, I think, is a very interesting, I mean, he had a very interesting life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. they all did, but um, he specifically is really interesting to me. So what do you guys think about this? I'm kind of excited. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of Chris. I, I've liked Chris Pine since the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie, and he's just continued to prove that in addition to being extremely handsome, he's actually... It's a good-looking uh, man, Emma. It's, it's a good-looking good looking man. man. <laughs> he's actually an incredibly talented actor, though, and yeah. I, I really enjoy his performance. I, I think he has such a wide range and I particularly like I love him in Into the Woods as Cinderella's freaking prince. Do you know and, what's like yeah. not a terrible movie? This means war with oh, him and yeah. Tom Hardy, and they're and fighting. Reese Witherspoon? And they're fighting for the yeah. love of Reese Witherspoon. Oh my true. god, I've not real. seen that in like a thousand years. It's really not bad. It's not terrible. Yeah. And Chris Pine, you know, like that movie could have been horrendous, but Chris mm -hmm. Pine is such like a lovely dude. He really and he's, like, is. A really good actor that you're like, you know what? This does mean yeah. it. I kind of like it. <laughs> For me, I feel also, like... Also, like, could I please be, like, in the middle of, like, yeah, a war between sure. Tom Hardy and Chris yeah. Pine? Yeah. Hey, Somebody make please. it happen. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. But I, I also feel like Chris Pine is one of those actors who is a real... I, he's just got so much charisma. Yeah. And you just want to watch everything that he's in. And I think in a, in a story like the Ken, about the Kennedys, right? And, and they've been trying to do so many Kennedy stories, right? Sure. Like they had Bobby and then they had that one with Greg Kinnear. And, right. right. You know, and there was like, Katie, the Holmes. Katie Holmes the Katie one. Holmes yeah. One. yeah. And like they keep, they keep making these miniseries and they do well. They do sure. sort of well. But there's none that have like really stuck out as like the quintessential Kennedy biopic or or bio series totally. or whatever the case may be. At least in recent memory, I mean, somebody somebody can point out from like the '80s or '90s, like there was something that we missed. But Bobby Kennedy is almost like the forgotten Kennedy, even though he was running for president, he got shot. I mean, the the tragic story of all those Kennedys. It is, and his story is really, really good. You know, I grew up and my dad is obsessed with the Kennedys. Yeah, yeah, me too. And he's too. obsessed with like history and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So I've watched so many either documentaries on right, A&E right. or too. History Channel about Robert Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people believe that he was the one that got his brother killed um, because, you know, he was out to get the mafia and all this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of different conspiracy theories on 
obviously the assassination of JFK, but obviously the assassination of RFK. So it'll be cool to see a name like Chris Pine bring some gravitas, if you will, John Rocha, um, <laughs> to a to an RFK kind of thing on Hulu. Because yeah. Hulu, yeah. you know, they've been, they're not the Netflix. They're not even no. Amazon, really. Yeah. But they yeah. have had some relative success lately. Yeah. You know? I mean, Handmaid's, Handmaid's Tale. Tale. Handmaid's Tale like awesome. flagship thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm excited to see kind of... Um, because he is, because they're obviously all super famous, but he is yeah. kind of like the lesser known brother. Yeah. Um. So I think that he's just got to get this. He always <laughs> that his head true. with the like the like the, the Star Trek that, symbol, like, and he would do that <laughs> with that like Alabama waft. Yeah. The, the Alabama the quarterback, little, the little, like, like Kennedy just, swoop. My, my hair gets that's in my what eyes. I, that's what we should start doing I, for Perry. I don't know why I went southern there. They're from Boston. I was like, yeah, my hair gets in my eyes. It felt right. It felt right. Just like fanning yourself. I can do a John F. Kennedy. And I'm super hoping that there's like, I mean, I haven't read the book. It's a biography. It's not fiction, obviously, but I love conspiracy theories. I love Marilyn Monroe. So I'm hoping. I also also like the idea of, of taking something that is a biography and adapting it to be more of a narrative. Scripted. Exactly, yeah. yes. exactly. I mean, it, it's kind of like, this is a bad example, but what Lin-Manuel Miranda did with Hamilton, he sure. took a biography sure. about Alexander Hamilton and then made it into a narrative a rap right, musical right, right. form. A rap yeah. musical. Yeah. <laughs> a rap musical, that's what it is. That's actually what this show may be. They haven't oh, said it's not dang. a rap musical. So, so it really like, could be. You know. A while back, we were having this argument about like Abraham Lincoln, a vampire hunter. Oh my God. Right? And I was like, I don't know why we, I was like, how sick would it be if it was like JFK zombie hunter or JFK <laughs> RFK take down zombie hunters? And then like, Mark was like, based Ooh, on true story, yes. we and had the real zombie be, take down. It could be like a rivalry between JFK and RFK <laughs> for who's the better zombie yes, hunter. Yes, yes, I Stuff like that. that. Yep. Based yep. on the biography, <laughs> RFK, Life and Times. <laughs> what was that real zombie chapter? Where'd that come from? <laughs> All right, what's next, Grace? Ah, right. So Fox has given an off-cycle pilot to um, to the show Cool Kids, a multi-cam comedy from the masterminds behind It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Cool Kids revolves around three guys in a retirement community who are the top dogs until they're blown out of the water by the newest member of the community, a female rebel who's ready to challenge their place. <laughs> there you go. Like, that's all I need to yeah. know. <laughs> I hope there's no laugh track. Right. Oh my yes. god. Although Fox like doesn't really do laugh tracks anymore, which is which is Nobody great. Should have, no. No. Because we no. watched Grace and I tried to watch this jointed this weekend. The, like just the pilot. Like this was, is me yeah. just going back to my grave. Yeah, the, it was it was yeah, brutal. The the day of the laugh track is but when they say multicam, you think like you you can do multicam and make it look like single cam. You, this yes, day and the, age. Yes, yeah, you can. It, totally. You yeah. can still do that multicam setup and still potentially have a live audience and have that kind of narrative flow. Because the thing that's nice as an actor about doing multicam is you actually tend to do scenes from beginning to end. Yes. Mm-hmm. Unlike when you're doing single cam, when you're doing a few take, lines take, take. of a single scene over and over and over right. again. So, but there is a way to still make multicam feel more organic and less kind of can't. Mm-hmm. 100%. And I think these guys have been trying to get a new pilot made. Forever. Did the entire roof just collapse? <laughs> <laughs> the I, think like, is I think there's like a Sasquatch trying to break in. Should we um, call someone? <laughs> Wendy? Uh, RFK? Pine? Where's Chris Pine? Um, what if he just busted in shirtless with a tool belt? He's like, I, I would this. literally, <laughs> like, these <laughs> pants would be. <laughs> We you are know. Now. Continue the show by yes. yourself. Josh, yeah. Yeah. Grace and I are and leaving. Back to Josh McCoogan. It's like, don't you see us leave? Like, suddenly our chairs are just spinning like we were just in them. <laughs> Chris Pine's here, guys. No big deal. Um, no, because these guys have been trying to get a, a pilot made forever. They, they made one a while back that was like the Orville. Um, and I always forget the name of that. People always tweet it at me. Uh, they've tried multiple different pilots. Yeah. I've read a couple scripts from them. And they're all very funny. But it's they're, everybody's like waiting for that new Always Sunny. And I think this kind of sounds like a reverse Golden Girls almost. Like mm-hmm. probably you're going to be a little more raunchy. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I mean, it's coming from these guys. It's, it's mayhem. Right. I read a, a script a while back about a senior. It was a movie. But they were trying to make it into a backdoor pilot. And it was. That's what she said. And um, <laughs> they. Uh, I was waiting for you. On I mean, that did one. you see like my eyes? Yes. Like, don't do it. Don't Grace. do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was about a guy whose wife dies, and he goes to uh, uh, an old folks' home, but he's never had a blowjob before. What? And it was hysterical, right? Yeah. It was a hysterical, hysterical show. And we were talking earlier that the largest population in this country that has STDs are people like senior citizens because they're like, well, I'm not in menopause anymore. Nobody's getting pregnant. Yeah. Might as well be out they, there banging. Not in right. menopause. <laughs> And they're, and they're like, uh, sorry, I said I'm that wrong. Po- post-menopausal, post-menopausal, so there's no, no risk of pregnancy, therefore unprotected sex yes. is... And they're all in like... Adam thinks we're They're funny. all in like senior, like 
your centers are like the Oaks in Arkansas or wherever. Well, they're like old people frats. And they're old people frats and they're just yeah. out there swanging dick, just like <laughs> loving it. <laughs> And these I people love are the like, just, there's just like a helicoptering, right. yeah. just, but old man. I, I think that the oh, point God. of this is you look at a show like Golden Girls, which is so funny and, and people still watch it. Like there's this weird timeless quality about yes. Golden Girls because it is. Because it's golden? <laughs> actually, hey, I mean, I'll see myself uh, out. Because, because <laughs> there, it is actually based somewhat in truth yes. and and that's why it holds up and so i think that we haven't had another sort of really good retirement home comedy yes. uh, like a, a senior citizen comedy so i feel like there's potential here agreed yeah. agreed oh yeah i would totally tune into this yeah. i mostly want to see who this female rebel is yeah uh, <laughs> let's hope it's like jane lynch oh dang i know she right or like no, that she's too young or like ida that. from uh Oh, from, from, uh, oh, from Mr. Uh, Mercedes. From Mercedes. Holland. Yeah. What's, her, what's her last name? Holland? I know her first name was Holland. Holland. Oh. Yeah, or like she's, on first name uh, basis. Sarah, uh, Sarah Paulson's yeah, partner. Yeah, her partner. And she's Holland. amazing. She'd be great. Uh, it's not sure. Holland Oates. Hold on. I'm going to look her up. <laughs> Which is an always sunny That's joke. it. That's um, absolutely correct. Okay. Grace, um, I believe our third story. Taylor. Today. Holland Ta Taylor. Holland Thank Taylor. Yeah. How <laughs> badass is that name? I should have yeah. changed my name to Holland Taylor. I love Holland her. McCougar? I think I would be like Dutch Macuga. That's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, just gonna... you ready? Story number three. Stretch guys. it out. <laughs> this, my friend. Yes. Is a slow yes. clap. I feel because... bad for people losing their jobs, but you signed on for it. <laughs> well, guys, TNT has canceled Will. Oh, oh! no! Crap! <laughs> I quit TV talk. It's official. When Will can't make it, nothing can make it. I mean, look at that gorgeous man in the in, punk rock era look at of that Elizabethan punk theater. Steampunk Billy Shakes. What's going on with that costume? I just don't understand. What is that hat? Is that like a foam? I think it's a. Crown? I think it's a prop crown. It's because a prop crown. Does he have an ear? Was an actor. Well, Grace, in the punk rock era of Elizabethan oh, you're theater, right. anything was possible. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. What's next? Correct. <laughs> um, all right. Well, now I can't put my chair back where I was. So I'll just, I'm like, hey, Adam, guys. Adam, you're, the frame is off. The frame is off. <laughs> no, oh, it's, it's me. It's, it's really it's not you. It's, it's me. It's, it's, it's also 9 a.m. to get a better look at that crowd. <laughs> like, he has an earring. Like, I can't accept that. R.I.P. Will. <laughs> but we are going to be moving along to Manhunt Unabomber on Discovery Channel. Last night we had uh, episode seven where we finally, spoiler alert, saw them finally capture this crazy man. Mm -hmm. And we were talking uh, before off air, like we felt really bad for Sam Worthington's I character. Know. This yeah. He's not been a super sympathetic character for me. Like, no, no, he hasn't. At all. And, and it's really funny because Grace, I was, be, I think because in the last episode, Sam Worthington wasn't in it at all. I was really cluing, like keying into you, like, your feelings about Sam Worthington and how bad of an actor me too. he is. Yay! Because in that, in that first, the scene where the coffee gets spilled, where he, oh, you're God. Su he's supposed to be having like an OCD, slightly autistic kind yeah. of meltdown. It he just did not sell it. No. He just oh, like, my, it was so when, dick. That, when we would spill milk as like a kid, my dad would be like, Jesus, this is why we don't put the bottle on the table. Right, <laughs> right. But I, I think that what he was going for again was that kind of meltdown that somebody who's really OCD would have, but it just came across as so yeah. yeah. I mean, for the storytelling is just like real chunky. Like they're like, we gotta get the war. We gotta get the war. And yeah. then he's like, cake, I got it. And I was like, let okay. me ask you a question. I kept thinking when they were like, we need the warrant, we need the warrant, right? And everybody's like, it's just words on paper. Why didn't he call in that hot linguistics professor from Stanford? She wasn't answering, remember? Oh, was that isn't what that was who happening? Was trying to call? I thought no, he was trying to call his wife. He was trying to call the wife. No, but isn't her name Valerie? Isn't the linguistics lady Valerie? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. he yeah. kept calling I think her. He was trying to, like, yeah, he was trying to call Valerie. both of them. Okay. I think she, because remember, in the last time we saw his story, oh, she, she was like, you want a bone? And he was like, nah. And she was like, screw you. And so now she's like screening. She's ghosting him. The exact writing of the scene. This yeah. was the exact writing of the scene. <laughs> that was like the Grace Nopsis of, yeah, of Man uh -huh. on Unabomber. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, cool, bang. Um, but yeah, but we saw them finally. They got him out. Okay, this is what I wanted to ask you guys. Did you guys buy the scene where his friend, like the neighbor from the small town, like yanked him out like a boss? 
I when they finally got it. it. I thought it was kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. Because that's how it happened. It, I went back and looked. And I'm like, is this how? Because I that part I was like, wow, that was like a really quick move. Yeah, it was but really. Because I was he's mad. such a frail, weird old man. Like he turned real slow and they grabbed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was I, a cool scene. I thought it was yeah. really, really cool. I, I was. I nervous. definitely had a moment where I was kind of taken aback, but at the same time went well. This guy is so unassuming and non-threatening and trustworthy seeming that yes. it it made perfect sense to me that he was able to just get in there and grab it, it, it was a really captivating scene i thought that was well, incredibly well done he had, i mean yes he's a paranoid dude and we've obviously you know in certain senses yeah. throughout the show have seen his paranoia but he's not paranoid that anybody else around him knows no because well and i think that what they really established in the last episode that carried over really nicely into this episode is there is a part of ted kaczynski that wants to be part of something that wants to be accepted be it in yeah be it within a a a family or in a town and we see that he has that friendship with the librarian and her son and so oh i know and he like sees them and and, and i mean they they bring up the fact that the fact that he has exchanged a few words with the guy who who comes in and, and does ultimately literally drag him out of his house. I yeah. mean, like a boss. Yeah. yeah, but but they establish that that's unusual that they have any sort of relationship at all. Oh. So I think that what they were trying to portray was that from Ted's perspective, there was a certain amount of trust involved yeah. there, yeah. and so and I actually felt sympathy for him in uh, this. Oh, 100 well. percent! Like oh, I, was I like, totally I did. I finally yeah. felt like the feels for Sam Worthington's character, especially when that one man was taking credit for all of this crazy I work know. that he's just gotten so shit on repeatedly by the yeah. whole FBI, the whole show. Yeah. And then the guy's like with the mom sweater. He's like, yeah, yeah, I figured it out. I was like, oh, mean. Yeah. But then I've I for both of them this episode I had equal like. Oh, like I'm kind of rooting for everyone here, and I'm confused. Right? No, mm-hmm. I mean, I think 100. percent You see, like a frail, dirty man come out, and like he's like crawling along, trying to get. You know, yeah. It is it's? It was a very powerful episode. I, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I think leading up to this, we've gotten a fair amount of. I think this has been a really well done series. Thus yeah, far. I, I totally I mean, agree. Maybe the writing isn't amazing, but the actual story being told is mm-hmm. a pretty very. It's a very interesting story. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited to see where things go with the, the brother trial. yeah well yeah i mean for and sure the, the tri- brother oh, oh that they were like they were like oh sh-, like they and he did like he was like yeah it's gonna be and then but i mean what, what was he supposed to do like not yeah. arrest it was like eh. yeah and i'd yeah. be scared as his brother like it, what if he gets out someday yes like repercussions yeah yep. but again and i haven't i've stayed away from looking up too much of the real story just because yeah. i am yeah. enjoying and, and that scene too where the press is just Insane. banging down the doors at his brother's house. <laughs> just and I love the wife. She's like, well, no shit. We're not going to open exactly. the door. <laughs> yeah. so Don't open the door. Yeah. Okay. It was intense. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's uh, it, it, I will say the one last thing that you forget that this guy was like such a ball, like they were all worried about booby traps all around yeah. this whole place. Oh my God, with like, like a Titanic robot mm-hmm. that I went know. in? Yep. It's crazy. I, yeah. I did have a moment when the Titanic robot was getting the bomb out from underneath the bed where in my brain I was like, that better not have freaking Sam Worthington's name and address. Yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, it did not. Thank because goodness. if that had been the case, I'd be like, all I'm right, out. that's fiction. Yeah, and I'm out. <laughs> all right, what's next, Grace? All right, now we're gonna go to Emma. Emma, Emma Mason. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. So, <laughs> she didn't do okay. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah to okay. <laughs> Forget uh, it from here like on out. It's like the 9 a.m. version. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll participate in the oh yeah. But it. Uh, <laughs> it seems that the future of animation is Netflix because I'm talking about a couple Netflix series today. So number one, Netflix dropped a trailer for The Magic School Bus Rides Again, which is the reboot of The Magic School Bus, which is in of itself a... Uh, it seems like it's technically a continuation of the original Magic School like Bus you animated do drugs series. Once and you're like Magic School Bus rides again. Let's yep. do those drugs let's just again. Keep, let's just keep Magic <laughs> School Bus in it, yes, uh, yeah. which in of itself is based on a series of books called The Magic School Bus. So the trailer, the, my biggest takeaway from it was I was watching it and the song was happening. I was like, "That's like Marilyn Miranda." Isn't it? And then, of course, I go to Twitter yeah. and Lynn Manuel Miranda has tweeted it. So sure. I was right. Yeah. Uh, nice that's call. what happens when you just listen to Hamilton constantly, <laughs> uh, which obviously is not me. Uh, but the, my thing about this is it looks fun. What I really 
enjoyed about the Disney XD DuckTales series. And of course, so far, there's only the initial two episodes. So I can't say for certain if this whole, if this is going to be a continuing trend throughout the series. Yeah. But I felt like DuckTales was very much made for people who are my age being able to watch it with their kids. But there's there's very funny scenes in it that only adults are going to get and kids uh-huh. aren't. And I from the trailer, this looks like a, don't necessarily get that sense totally from Magic School show. Bus. Yeah, yeah, for for that that is sort of I guess my disappointment in it in a way is that it feels like this is okay. We're just making Magic School Bus again for kids now. Yes. Instead of being I mean, like, like a t- when you sent me, I was like, so it's a kid show. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it, it looks it, like something my niece and nephew would watch. Absolutely, like, absolutely. Yeah. Which is, I mean, there's some very good good kid shows that are definitely sure. directed at really little kids. Transformers Rescue Bots is a great show, but yeah. but this is very much more in the vein of that than say like a, a Transformers Prime, which is. Very accessible to adults. Got it, got so it. Okay. Uh, again, I, I I'll check it out when it actually comes out just to see. But o- overall, I'm not super enthused about. I, I am from the point of view of oh good, a new generation of kids is going to get to watch a fun wacky Magic School Bus, and yes. Kate McKinnon is great. You know, there you go. I love yeah. her. Yes. Uh, Netflix also dropped a new series this past weekend from Studio Mir, which is the Korean animation studio that animated Legend of Korra and Voltron: Legendary Defender, uh, called Lego Elves: Secrets of Elvendale. Oh. So. Uh, what is that? I can't remember. A couple people tweeted this at me. And this is one that I was... look like Legos. It's not Legos. Oh. Uh, it is Okay, so this is the deal with the series. It is based on the mythology that has been created around these elf Lego sets. But there's no... It's not a Lego series. Uh, it's not like a Lego Star Wars or a Lego Batman. Or Lego Ninjago. Right, exactly. It is, it, But it's more like... Lego Ninjago from the point of view that it is original Lego story. <laughs> so basically there are these Lego sets <laughs> and they've created this whole world amongst these various Lego things that you can purchase and build. And this is a story that takes place in that world. Got it. And this is one I definitely went into thinking, okay, I know it, it looks like Korra, it looks like Voltron, but this is going to be a super kiddie show. And it's more kitty than either of those series are, okay. but I was pleasantly surprised. Okay. And I only watched the first episode, and, and part of me feels like I don't know if the reason I was sort of forgiving of it is because I love this studio's animation so much, so my brain was automatically oh, yeah. telling me, ooh, there's going to be interesting character relationships and levels to this. But it was cute. All, there's all <laughs> these elves. They have dragons. So many levels in Elvendale. It's Elvendale. great. It's great. Levendale. Yeah, and I, there's a, yeah, and there's like a, a swarthy, <laughs> sexy elf that's trying to play everybody Whoa. else. What? Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Swarthy, sexy elves. <laughs> Sign me up. Yep. And then uh, <laughs> finally, the final exam arc, which is going to be the last story arc of the second season of My Hero Academia, began this past weekend. And it's crazy because they all thought they were going to be fighting robots, but they're not. Robots? They're not fighting robots? Nope. Spoilers for the Whoa. practical part of their exam. Instead of fighting robots, all of the uh, members of Class 1A, which is the main class that you're following, mm-hmm. they're being put into teams of two, and they have to fight their professors. Oh, yeah. They yes. have to either defeat them or escape. And my yes. favorite part of the episode That's was when amazing. Eraserhead, their main classroom homeroom teacher, uh, was explaining Eraser. how they... Fucking <laughs> yeah, Eraserhead. Well, he erases people's quirks. Oh. So he takes away their ability to have uh, superpowers temporarily. Huh. That's kind of what, what it dick. is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good power. <laughs> it's a really good power. A racer hit. But he, uh, he's talking about how they paired everybody up in the class. And for the most part, the reasoning is, oh, they had complementary powers. This person has this character weakness and this strength, and this person has the opposite thing. But then with Bakugo and Midoriya, Midoriya is the main character. So obviously the final episode is going to be the two of them fighting against All Might. It's, it's pretty clear this is where it's going. But his reasoning for that was, <laughs> yeah, we just paired these two up because they get along terribly. Oh. <laughs> So nice. there you go. Yep, there you Eraser go. head. Yep. M M M A M A T. Thank you, Oh, yeah. There it is. There it is. Someday I want you to like cast the TV talk cast like as animes. Oh, like if okay. we were in one of these, okay. who we would be. Sure. I yes. could so I can just like that. plant that little okay, seed. Got it, got got that. Great. Like <laughs> I'm just here to enrich everyone's lives. <laughs> Could um, you, uh, should we do some tweeter questions? Mm-hmm. Some, some, some quitter. Qu- some quitter some questions. Some quitter. quitter. Just quitter. Quit. Hey, listen, everybody. Your advice here from everybody at the Collider TV talk panel is just quit. Just, 
quit on everything. And you know what? After last night's it screening, I was about to quit on life and just walk into a <laughs> oh, muddy bog and call it. Oh, I just was climbing like, a sore I was for like clown. So, I like thought of you last night and I was like, it is like I felt like empathy is for you. Utterly, terrifying. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not nice. I'm not allowed to. We're, you I, there, definitely. I guess not. there's an embargo, but I, I, it's. Yeah. So that's my Did review. You shit your my pants? review is. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, what do we got? I wanted to go with um, at Myers FTW because oh, I am the biggest music sound design nerd ever. What are your, some of your guys' favorite television scores of all time? I'm gonna go first. Lost. The Lost. Lost soundtrack is so fucking mm. epic. They have a good score. It is I mean, so good. Yeah. Like Game it makes of, me cry every time. Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah. great yeah. score. Um, you know, there mm. was it, Sopranos. Every episode ended on like a really cool song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and they uh, the way the Sopranos ended every episode with some sort of song that tied the whole episode together. Right, right, was right. So well scored. I wouldn't yeah. exactly call that like. A score of a show, but but Sopranos it's like had a, a musical yeah, direction. Yeah, musical direction. Yep. But uh, another show that that had a really really amazing score is Breaking Bad. Oh, you, oh yeah. my god! It, like, like so boom. tonal. Yeah, yeah. It, like set the whole. Yeah. It sounded like the desert. I also like the show sounded like the desert. I also feel like like Xena and Hercules both had really great. <laughs> they had really great scores in terms of sort of setting the tone of the series, yes. which was. Well, this is sort of epic, but we don't really take ourselves that seriously. We're in Santa yeah, Clarita. Yeah. We're not really right, in exactly. Which yeah. is ultimately why those shows were successful is because they didn't take themselves too seriously. Agreed. So Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. yeah, let's do one more, Gracie. Yeah, I'm gonna go with our friend Ben at Kylo Benna. Yeah. Good morning, Collider TV Talk crew. Good morning. <laughs> um, I'm curious what the one. What's the one show that made you guys cry like a baby? <laughs> well, I mean, this okay, is us my, from last year. <laughs> Uh, my answer's a little weird. Uh, it's gonna be anime. <laughs> no, it's not actually. Oh. It is a Korean drama. Oh, well, uh, close enough. <laughs> called Scarlet Heart Rio about a girl who basically she sort of time travels, but really she reincarnates in the body of one of her past incarnations, but with all of her future memories. And sure. she's in the court of the first king of Goryeo, which was the like unified Korea. Uh, and she's just surrounded by hot princes who are all in love with her. And it all seems fun. And then everything goes horribly, terribly wrong. And there was one episode where I was like inconsolably <laughs> sobbing, <laughs> just dying. If you guys have seen it, you probably know what episode it was. It involves one of the younger princes and his wife and... Uh, Oh, it was bad. It was I cried. Bad. I mean, obviously, last year with This Is Us, I cried pretty much every episode. Like, in console. Like, at the end of certain episodes. I mean, spoiler alert, you can throw it up there. Oh, look who's here. Captain Spoiler oh, Alert, Cody Hall. Oh, it's our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Cody Hall. Um, I, I, I the, the one when the, when the dad died. Uh, the, the Sterling K. Brown's real dad. Oh, man, that one that one knocked my socks off. And also, like a lot of series finales. Like when I was a kid, when the family tie when family ties ended, I remember like in my mom's arms, like, no, no. I was like, there's reruns, like, they're not gonna have oh, that is so then, precious. Like when, baby Josh. Yeah, when like at the end of Friends when they just focus on the frame on the door and like and I'm like Oh my god, I know, oh. right? Yeah, it was. There was some good series finale. Growing pain series finale got me real good. <laughs> I'm yeah, not like man. much of like a crier, but the for for whatever reason, when uh, spoiler when Hodor died in yeah. Game of Thrones, oh. I like could not pull it together. Yeah. Like, and I was with so, I was watching it with somebody, and I was literally like, "Play cool, Grace. Like <laughs> everything's fine." But I like I couldn't get it together for oh, like no. 20 minutes. It was just like. Silent. Like when I first started dating a man, I cried like our third date watching TV. Aww. And she and I and I have this like weird thing right before I cry where I go like, <gasps> <laughs> like yes, like to a stop little hiccup. Yeah, it's to do the it. worst. It gives you away. And the like, man looks at me you. and she's like, Yep. Are you crying? And you're like, No, I have allergies. Everything is fine. No, I'm just really allergic to everything here. Everything. It's okay. Yeah, no, I was just like, No, there's an eyelash in my eye. Really, it's I'm it's I'm not crying. Like it was horrible. It was great though. All right. That's it. That's turn of questions. Woo! That's Collider TV Talk. We're doing a pick of the day here real quick. Pick of the day. If you could pick a TV mom to pack your lunch for the first day of school, who would it be? 
I would choose the mom from Sister Sister because oh, she's hilarious. She's I would hilarious. choose Kitty from that '70s show. Oh, that's a really good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I'd, I'd I pick love Skylar Kitty. from Baking Bad because maybe she'd like oh. write my name in Bacon or something. Yeah, Ooh. maybe. I mean, Bacon. Know, so yeah, whatever. Skylar. All right, <laughs> let's get out of here. Uh, Emma Fife, where can the good people find you on the internet? You can find me all over the internet wherever Emma Fife's are sold. At my name, Emma Fife, E M M A F Y F F E. Join me later this afternoon, four o'clock p.m. Pacific time, twitchtv hyperrpg for some adventure. Adventures in Fiefdom, I will be streaming an indie RPG called West of Loathing. It's like a spaghetti western RPG, and all the characters are stick figures. It's going to be great. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's pure Emma Fife yeah, right there. Really we is. got more Emma Fife as she kept talking. Grace Hancock. Um, and I'm Grace Hancock. You can find me online everywhere, including at quitter.com, at Mrs. Grace Face. <laughs> I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga, Twitter and Instagram, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube, 9 a.m. every single day here on Collider Video until they switch our time slot again. Who knows when that's going to happen, but we are 9 a.m. PST every day. We'll see you tomorrow. Put down the book. Pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.